Hello, everyone, and welcome to the birthplace of Country Music Museum tonight. We are very glad to have you here with us. We are doing our monthly speaker series, our last one of the year, um, and we are in the, the holiday spirit, and you'll see that soon. But first, just a few little housekeeping um, bits and bobs for you guys here with us in the performance theater, and for those of you who are joining us via Zoom. Um, if you are on Zoom, please stay muted and with your video off during the program because that just sort of helps make it a better experience for everyone on the Zoom end of things. We will have an audience Q&A after our time with Dawn. Um, and so if any of our Zoom participants have questions, please put them in the chat and we will integrate those questions into the Q&A. Also, there will be a feedback survey that is sent out in the next day or two. Please provide your thoughts on the program as these always help us to improve in the future and also gives us ideas for other programming. And finally, for those of you who are here in person, um, if you need to leave to run to the restroom, the restrooms are down the hallway and on the left. And if you need to leave the program earlier before we finish, um, the front doors will be locked in the next 10 minutes, but you can go out the side doors here right beside the performance theater. Now let's jump into our program. And one thing I just remembered that I did not do is tell you who the heck I am. Um, just some random woman who walked off the street and started talking to you. Um, no, I am Renee Rogers. I am the head curator here at the Birthplace of Country Music Museum. My colleague, Scotty Almany, is up there running tech. Um, and we are always your hosts for speaker series. Um, but tonight we have a very special guest. We have Don Royston, who is here with us. Um, and he is going to be talking to us about the Appalachia Santa's train or the Appalachia Santa train. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Don. He was with Dent K. Burke Associates from 1974, and he was a principal there from 1982 until 2016. He retired in 2018, and he was um, he is now very active in a whole lot of things within his community. Um, he is a member of Colonial Heights Baptist Church. In addition, he serves in numerous professional and community organizations, including the Appalachia, Appalachian chapter of TSCPA, the Tennessee Society of CPAs, Kingsport College Foundation, which serves as the advisory committee for ETSU at Kingsport, the Inventor Center of Kingsport, Kingsport Homeless Ministry, Appalachian Miles for Smiles, the Kiwanis Club, Tennessee Baptist Association, and Micro Loans of Belize. He has been actively involved in the Kingsport Chamber, CSX Transportation Santa Train, playing Santa Claus since 1999, so 24 years as being Santa Claus. And he also supports the Santa Train Scholarship Program. As you can see from that long list of things that Don is involved with, we were very lucky to find him able to give us his time. So please join me in welcoming Don. He's going to talk to us about Appalachia Santa Train. And please join us for questions afterwards. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Scotty. It's been a pleasure trying to put this presentation together. It's been an active year. We're thrilled to have the Santa Train back on the tracks again. Um, it's been a true blessing for me the whole time. Uh, let me tell you just a little bit about what the Santa train is. Um, okay, we're trying to get your, your little clicker. There, is, there we go. Okay, I'm clicking to the computer in the back and mine up front here too, so... Uh, Uh, the Santa Train is a partnership of CSX Transportation with Food City, Souls for Souls, Appalachian Power, and the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce. A um, little, little background history about this whole thing. In 1943, a group of businessmen um, Uh, including Bill Waddell of the Kingsport Times News and Flem Dobbins of Dobbins Taylor Hardware were part of the Kingsport Merchants Associations that came up with the idea of um, 
trying to thank the people in Eastern Kentucky, Southwest Virginia for shopping in Kingsport. They approached Clinch, Clinchfield Railway with the idea of having a special theme train as part of the regular scheduled um, passenger service that would travel to Elkhorn City, Kentucky, pick up Santa and let the children receive canning gifts as they traveled to Kingsport. That would involve approximately 40 stops along the 85 mile run at that point. And for those that were not uh, riding the train, a PA system was installed uh, that would allow Santa to speak to the crowds. Uh, this up here is an ad that actually um, uh, was put in the paper trying to tell you to come to Kingsport, um, promoting the fare, round trip fare from 22 cents to $4.13 round trip and allowed you to, to time to shop, ride the train, and have Santa, a visit with Santa before, and a movie before returning home. So at the time, and this was, this at the time was the Friday after Thanksgiving, what we would call Black Friday today. During the, uh, the Santa train uh, period, there have only been four Santas. The first and undisputed only professionally trained to Santa school, Joe Higgins in 1943. He did it for several years, followed by John Dudney, who did it for 38 years. A little few stories about John Dudney. I don't, I never knew uh, uh, Joe Higgins, but uh, John Dudney was a character. Uh, jolly old elf, postmaster. I remember a couple of things with John uh, as he aged. And in 38 years riding the back of the train, you can age in a hurry when you're already started well on the aging process. Uh, he would would be coming out of a tunnel and he would see a, a sign and he'd throw it a dollar. He thought it was a child. And at the time, we were throwing gifts the full route. Uh, I remember a young, overzealous young man once uh, jumping up to try to take something out of the hands uh, as we stopped. And old John had a bag of marbles, and John popped him right on the top of the head, and that took care of that one right then. So he got the message that he wasn't to do that. John was a swell guy. As he aged, Frank Brogdon then uh, from Tennessee Eastman. This is Frank and Mrs. Claus. He took over and spelled part of the train for him over the – in, during the time frame. So if you start adding the years up, you may not come up with the 80 years exactly, but that's because Frank overlapped with two of us. Uh, Frank had this knack and was in public relations at Eastman, and he could remember anybody's name. He could spot a child out there and call him by name, and that child would just start shaking. The best story that Frank used to tell on himself, though, was after being mic'd by one of the national film crews that was on the train, he had a drawstring in his pants up here. And when they took the mic back, they didn't get the drawstring. So when he got to Kingsport, uh, he starts backing off the train in the new normal safety three-point stance and realized there was something around his ankles that shouldn't have been there. And he had just surprised the crowd in Kingsport uh, by – uh, losing his britches. Great fella. He came to me in 1990, uh, probably 1998, and said, would you have any interest in becoming Santa in training? Uh, I had, had been on the train working in the, uh, the train car for 15 to 20 years already with moving product around because I could count. And we allocated all of our totes for the 110 mile run so we wouldn't run out because we didn't just have the stops. We were throwing product then. And I became Santa in training. It would spell Frank for the first two or three years uh, from 1999 until he retired. Uh, <clears throat> and he would bring the train that last half of the train into Kingsport to do the parade. Frank did it for 20 years. And now, counting my 99 forward, I'm in my 24th year and totally blessed and thankful that I have had the opportunity to meet people, et cetera. And, and here I am uh, with, with one of my favorite pictures. So uh, this is the typical poster that um, 
we would send out uh, each year. And this particular one happened to be uh, one when Marty Stewart was on board. Uh, this is the current stops, and there's 14 stops, and it tells you exactly when you're going to arrive. Uh, so they Santa goes up through the, through the train route two or three weeks ahead of time and puts the posters out at all the favorite spots up there to tell people when they're coming. And then our partner, Food City, in their stores also promotes it. This is the train route uh, that we run. Uh, you'll see the um, um, the different stops that we run, uh, starting up at Shelbyana, which is just outside of Pipeville, uh, which is the home where Patty Levels grew up, uh, down through Dungannon and all the way down here, Dungannon, Dant, Clinch Cove, through the stops into Kingsport. Uh, there are over 20 tunnels that we travel through. Uh, the biggest one being Big Sandy Tunnel. Uh, that's Sandy Ridge. It's uh, 7,400 and almost 7,500 feet long. So it's a mile, almost a mile and a half long tunnel that we go through. Most beautiful things. You can't imagine the beauty as you're riding down the track and seeing they reface the, the tunnel openings back in the 20s and 30s, but a lot of these tunnels were dug by hand in the early 1900s. You know, some of them as old as 1912 and, and before, so it's it's pretty impressive. Um, this was how I got my job. Uh, this is how we allocated all of our toy totes and our food totes so that we didn't run out. Uh, this was the chart that I came up with, and this was probably done on Lotus for those that uh, that, that are as old as I am. Uh, and with, without what we've got to, our access to today, uh, but we would count them on the target and then mark each of the totes and put cards out on them and signs and, um, and keep up with. This is what the interior of the train would look like at that point. Uh, with the red totes being toys and the, the brown totes being full of candy and food. Uh, we also we had wrapping paper and things like that that we passed on that would come on. Um, back over the years, uh, you know, we had the four Santas. And one of the neat things about the Santas is that, except for Joe Higgins, the next three Santas and to today were all presidents of the Kingsport Kiwanis Club, uh, which, you know, our club mission is improving the life of the child of the world one child at a time. So that kind of ties into where we got our hearts for that. During the mid fifties, the passenger service was uh, discontinued and uh, Clinchfield Railroad, I'm told, put a special car on the back of, the tr of a regular freight train for a period of time. Uh, and then the time frame shifted to where they went to um, uh, the Friday, uh, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. After the Clinchfield merger in the uh, early 80s, the train was, uh, the Santa train was extended to Elkhorn City uh, from Shelby to Shelby, Kentucky, from Elkhorn City. Uh, increasing the run from 95 miles to the current 110 miles. Uh, they moved the office up there when they merged with Seaboard and CSX was born. Uh, we distribute, uh, during the 14 stops, we distribute 15 tons uh, plus of candy and toys and goods with, uh, that are either donated with purchased funds or the goods themselves are donated. Um, the Santa train matured with three, I would say, key players from the community. Uh, the first was E.B. Jitney Blankenbeck. For anybody who used to ride around downtown Kingsport, we had the Jitney in our public uh, buses. They were the trolley looking cars except for the very first Santa train because of his service with the military. He missed that one, but for the next 
over 40 years, he would be a part of the train, hand mixing candy at oftentimes till his fingers were raw. Uh, on the train initially, uh, he would solicit the candy and toys through the Merchants Association, which became the Chamber of Commerce. And the second one was Raymond Gallion, who was Santa's biggest bum. Uh, he was allowed and encouraged by his employer, Oakwood Markets, and the Boyd family to work practically year-round, getting donation, food and toys, and funds put on the train. The first packing party that I ever attended with, that we had an actual packing party instead of packing everything on the train, was at the Oakwood Market in Weber City, Virginia, in the back stock room with a group of small group of elves that were probably going to be the ones that are going to get to ride the train the next day or two. Around 1983, Raymond would have to give up his role as uh, uh, to ensure the continuation of the tradition as the Oakwood markets were soon to be sold. And not to let anyone down, Raymond worked tirelessly to hand off to the open arms of his successor, who was then would be Mr. Ed Moore. Ed Moore was welcomed by Raymond, though reluctantly, I'm sure, because it was his baby and he didn't really want to give it up. But Food City saved it. They were there to take it over and he worked with it to be sure there was smooth transmission. Trans this is Ed and he worked hard to suit to his, uh, with Food City until his death in 2013. Um, his legacy lives on today with uh, a young lady, although she's not as young as she was back in when he, she took it over, uh, through his self-trained elf, uh, who he hired and trained, uh, Jamie Horton. Uh, and she's still trying to train her store manager, Raymond Stockton, who's the official Santa train. But Jamie organizes the blocking block packing parties and all that each year. She organizes getting the product in with their, with the food city organization and is totally supported by food city and the effort. It's a, a year long effort uh, that goes on. Um, back during the day you know, on our runs, Eastman would take three ring binder notes books when he was Eastman Kodak and Eastman Chemical before it spun off. They would fill those three ring binders with, with lined notebook paper and shrink wrap them. Uh, meat employees would take their <coughs> copy paper, cut it in half and pad it and make big thick pads to pass off the back of the train. A Bristol bakery, which I believe was Hex Bakery at the time from my memory, would bake uh, a thousand mini loaves of bread each year wrapped and as I remember, it was this, their Sunbeam brand. Now, I may be wrong on that, but it's the memory is those individual loaves of bread that they, they made special runs for each year to put on the Santa train. We had the Terry's potato chips, Morris potato chips, both Bristol organizations. We had Benzel pretzels out of Pennsylvania. And if I had a penny for every Little Debbie's cake, uh, particularly the ones I've eaten, but... Uh, <laughs> and moon pies over the years that have supported us from as long as I've been on the train. I mean, they have been great about working through. Uh, we have, um, um, really are blessed and we've had other people that donate completely and, and make donations and vendors that do that as well. A lot of the bottling companies and that to make this a possibility to continue the tradition. Okay. In 1975, there was a guidepost article. Van Varner, the editor of guideposts rode the train. Here's the article, the cover. There's the Christmas special. And this was the old Clinchfield one that um, uh, they told about the, the uh, train. And then in 1982, Charles Corralt rode the train. 
and did a segment on the, on the road again series. I remember vividly, and in the background back there with that hat that's sticking up, and I can't let you see it, but that's that's actually me in the very much younger format in the picture. Uh, this is a Ron Flannery. You'll notice Ron Flannery's name show up all over the place tonight. Uh, and I'll tell you some more about Ron when we get into it. But uh, we started getting some publicity then. Uh I remember it, when this picture was taken, we were sitting on Copper Creek Trestle, which is the major trestle on just past Spears Ferry, the big high one, Southern's on the lot, lower side, and Copper, Crest, Copper Creek's on the top. Charles Corral decides he's going to see if he can get Frisbees over to the highway. <laughs> well, there wasn't any way in the world it was going to go, but he had a good time trying. Very, very nice individual. Then in uh, 19, November the 14th, 1986, we had a New York Times front page article by William E. Schmidt uh, talking about the Santa train. Uh, he rode the train, and then there's a two-page article, and I've actually got the reprints over there on the table. Uh, he got into, at the time, you know, coal business was starting to dip, and he got into a little more of the, the, the poverty situation, it's always been a thank you thing, but there's also been a great need in the coal fields and to be able to reach out and help our neighbors up there, particularly this past year with all the flooding. But after this article appeared, um, Charles' uh, donations started rolling to support and initially used the, for basic school supplies, all the money that was coming in. Uh, we would improve based on the, the popularity of those notebooks that people would leave the, the toys and the pencils and all that. They'd leave all that behind to get the school supplies and the books and magazines that we would send off. Uh, I know Blackburn News Agency here in Bristol, and that's not in here, but I remember they used to bring us, you know, good coloring books and things that we could, could drop off. Um, so we decided that um, at that point we would develop a scholarship uh, and start using the funds to fund the scholarship for the youth. This is Rebecca uh, Lynn Bailey, was the first scholarship winner in 1989. Uh, I've got a picture of Rebecca Lynn Howard and Pal Barger in the dome car that was on the train this past year, even uh, when she rode the Scott rode it with us. Initially, the scholarship was set up as a uh, four year. $1,000 a year renewable scholarship if you maintain a 2.5 average mm -hmm. and um, had financial need, extracurricular activities, work record, your uh, advisor recommendation uh, to date. And then we increased that uh, four or five years later, I think, to a $1,250 a year scholarship to $5,000. To this date, we have um, awarded 34 scholarships, totaling $164,000 through the goodness of donations that have come in and the earnings off of those. Um, well, come on, Flipper. There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Talk about Pal Barger. How many of you remember the 53 Buick hanging off of Sharon's barbecue? Pal's wife. Each one of those pigs, there were 22 of them. Each year, you could put somebody, your favorite friend's name on one of those for $100. This picture is uh, Christy, the daughter, standing on top up there, giving, receiving, giving us the check for the scholarship fund for $2,200. So this is the way some of the people, you know, paid it forward in, in Kings Ford. In uh, 1991, Ron Flannery and I were traveling down the back of the track trying to figure out ways to raise funds for the 50th anniversary and for the scholarship. And uh, on a piece of cardboard, Ron starts sketching out this painting, and there's the original painting over there. Uh, we did signed and numbered prints. 
And for $25, and there's still some even available today at the chamber, all that money, 100% of the proceeds go into the scholarship fund. So this was another way that, that we have fed that over the years. Uh, knowing that the um, book, that the train was coming up, uh, the um, Ron and a group of men from loosely termed Clinchville Mafia are train chasers, have camera, will travel, and they went all over the country. So in 19, probably 1991, team led by David DeVault, Paul Hopkins. David DeVault was uh, in charge of transportation at Eastman. And so he had both UP, Union Pacific, and uh, C uh, CSX ties. And he led the charge. And this, this four group of Paul Hopkins, Pete Morissette, and Ron Flannery made the trek out to the home office of uh, Union Pacific and broached the idea of uh, re-numbering and re-lettering the, the uh, 3985 Challenger steam engine, which is the largest steam engine that weighs over a million pounds that CSX or Clinchfield at the time ever had. Uh, they were successful and they renumbered it 676, uh, which was a similar number to the ones that would have run on our rails here over the time and brought it down the tracks. Some of Ron Flannery's handiwork here. Uh, Ron incidentally will be having an article come out in Trains Magazine in April. Those of you that are train buffs or want to pick up a copy of it, uh, I believe it's an eight-page spread covering the 80, the, from the train standpoint, more of the history. He is an unbelievable historian and artist. So um, at the same time, we'll go back to my guidepost connection. I remember the, the earlier article that Van Varner and I got a message to Van Varner and invited him to send to come and cover the train again for the 50th anniversary. He wrote me a nice letter back and he said, I am already tied up, but can I send my faith and stuff editor, Mary Lou Carney, to cover that for the kids? And of course, that was a no-brainer. At the time, we pretty well got all, most of our coverage on, on our own. Uh, so Mary Lou Carney showed up. Here's Mary Lou, and, and actually I was able to be her photographer. So this is actually some of my own work. Um, I guess it's the only time I've ever been published, but, uh, <laughs> but Mary Lou was one, one sweetheart. Funny story on Mary Lou. She had on these bright red leather boots and she's out there and any of you been around a railroad track, know there's grease and goo. The first thing she does is step in the goo and it's up about this high on those nice shiny red leather boots. So we had to clean our boots off there on the nose of the train. Uh, that's one of the articles inside of it. A couple of those pictures I took as well. Uh, this was, uh, in 19 and 90, uh, 19 and 92, um, Joe Garagiola joined us on the train. And uh, for the 50th anniversary special, uh, gosh, that didn't shot over here. Everybody was issued a commemorative ticket. This ticket's laying over there that he signed for me. He actually, in his interview on television, and you can go back and watch it on the things, he wore my railroad engineer's hat. And uh, he said, can I borrow your hat? And I said, if you'll give it back. He said, I'll tell you what, and he takes off his World Series cardinal ring. 
and hands it to me to wear while he's wearing my hat, which I didn't want to trade back. Super nice individual. Okay, over the years, this is the new twist on it. Uh, in 1998, I was not Santa then, but uh, Travis Tritt was our first recorded uh, person on the train, followed by, and I'll try to get them to you here as we go through them. Uh, Travis boarded the train uh, probably a stop or two down the track, probably at Elkhorn City, I think, and he brought on a crew with him and brought on his some of his excess T-shirts that we were able to pass out on that, which was a super hit. Uh, Travis Tritt, Greg, Craig Perica, receiving his Santa train print. He's actually, if you'll notice in his left hand, that little pink thing, well, that's his daughter and his wife were on board with him at the same time. So he wasn't going to turn loose of his daughter just to get a silly picture. So uh, uh, that was the first recorded one. The next year in 1999 was Patty Lovell's. My first year, um, and Cree Harrison came on board in 2001. Actually, Joe Diffie should have been with her that year, and he had a death in the family, so he missed it. Uh, but Cree made her appearance for the first time then. She would ride later with us. And then we had uh, Patty Loveless again rode with us and uh, we've changed this around again okay let's see how this works out now That's on her CD. At the same time, Rebecca Lynn Howard, who had done a, uh, a duet with her on this same CD, uh, 
not Santa Train, but it was on this CD. She accompanied Patty Loveless with us that year. And, you know, Rebecca Lynn Howard's a two-time Grammy winner as well. So, uh, uh, next year, um, we were, I was graced with the presence of Naomi Judd, which we lost this year. One sweet lady, I will tell you. Um, she was just full of joy and excitement the whole time. She brought and gave some of these books out. I've got my personalized copy to Santa over there that she did. Children's book. She really loved children and, and literacy. Uh, we're going to miss her. Next year was Allison Krauss. Allison used to hang out a bit in town with the Blue Highway because a lot of her band members were from Kingsport. So when she mounted the stage in Kingsport, I found out that she liked, and I'm, believe me, I've eaten enough Pals burgers, but she liked sauce burgers, Frenchy fries, and a chocolate milkshake. So when I she got up on stage, I had ordered her that very back thing and got to present it to her on stage in Kingsport. Uh, the next year, we were followed by... Um, um, Winona Judd. Somehow I missed Kathy Matea in here somewhere, but I don't know how I did. Kathy was a sweetheart. And I'm, I'm, my apologies to Kathy for not getting her in here. I don't know how I missed that. Um, Kathy was a card. She would stand up, and I've got pictures of her with her. She would want to get the toy back to the person on the very back row, so she'd start climbing up on stuff. And Frank Waldo, my elf, you know, I can remember turning around here, Frank, with his arms around her legs. He starts to over the back. So, uh, <laughs> Kathy would, uh, she made some great pictures, and I missed that one. Anyway, we had uh, then Winona Judd was on there in 2009. One of my favorite pictures, Winona and Naomi in 2010. Uh, Naomi leans over and puts her head, she's got her head on my shoulder and just when this picture was taken and she points across the back of the platform, she says, you see that guy standing over there? She says, that's Cactus. Said, that's the best one she's brought home yet. <laughs> well, they married. Cactus was her drummer and they were up in Cactus and, and Winona were up at the racetrack back a number of years ago performing and I got to see them up there. So, uh, that's uh, very fond memories on that ride. Thompson Square, very, very kind, uh, down-to-earth group, had so much fun. They said, hey, can we do it again next year? And they did on the front of VIP Scene Magazine. Doesn't get any better than that. Well, Miles Burdine on the left, and then Jamie Horton from Food City on, and then Thompson Square, and I can't – Mary Beth, and I can't see who the other one is there, but uh, we've gotten beautiful coverage, and I've got just a very small sample of after it's over. If y'all want to look at the stuff I brought up here, magazines and things that I brought. Uh, Cree Harrison, you saw the little Cree Harrison in 2001. This is the improved version, uh, and the grown up version back uh, 14 years later, or 10, 12 years later, I guess it was. Amy Grant. Amy was a pure sweetheart. When you see her handing off a book here, this book, and I'll show you here in a few minutes what it is, that's the Santa Train tradition. But she, that's something that the kids love, is books, liter literature. I mean, if you can give them a book, they'll fight for the book and, and leave the candy. Um, Amy and I are actually singing together here now. <laughs> I mean, I can sing Here Comes Santa Claus, but that's what we were singing. I'll be totally honest, but I actually got to sing with Amy Grant on stage. So, uh, This is would be uh, Maddie and Tay. Uh, no, that's Megan Lindsay. Excuse me. Megan Lindsay. Uh, she was American Idol up, runner-up for one year. Uh, Daryl Worley. Daryl was a super nice individual. I am not singing you one of us. Uh, and this one, this fellow right here now is, is one of my favorites, Ricky Skaggs. Ricky, um, 
actually grew up, his family is from Southwest Virginia. Now, they were trappers along the whole areas up there and would, uh, back during the Indian uprisings or when they were having Indian troubles. And they actually, the Skaggs family rescued, uh, and it's, you can Google it and find the stories behind it. Actually went out and rescued somebody that had been one of the white women that had been uh, kidnapped by the Indians and brought her back to safety. But we were able to, um, uh, I've got the train master to slow down when we got to Skaggs Hole. There's a Skaggs Tunnel and Skaggs Hole. And Ricky and uh, Johnson, uh, his wife, just a sweet couple. He's back there just wearing his camera out, taking pictures of all that. So he wanted to stay on the back of the train. Some of the performers would not stay back for long. Ricky would have lived back there all day long if it hadn't been having to go in and do interviews with people. All right, you've heard me talk about Ron Flannery. He painted the print. He's doing the historical stuff. This is Ron in his uh, prelude to the bringing the 800 for the 50th anniversary in the town. For the 75th anniversary, I'm sorry. He actually went to the corporate uh, rework buildings up in West Virginia for CSX to their shop and help do the research to get the painting scheme right on this. That's how much of a historian he is. So this was pictures that were taken in Kingsport. That's actually outside of King outside of Kingsport when they were pulling the Clinchfield 100, which is actually a restored car that was used on the Santa train for many years and then came back for this. It lives in Jonesboro at the Waltaga Museum over there, the Waltaga Historical Society Museum. Uh, they have four or five cars. They work tirelessly, volunteer help restoring the cars. This one is fully restored. Uh, and is right now, as we speak, in Spencer, North Carolina, as part of the Polar Express uh, with their railroad museum over there. So the, that, that group of volunteers has just done an unbelievable job of keeping those cars up, Mike Tilly and company. Uh, I chased that train all day long from the back, and when it finally stopped, I got to get up and try to drive it. And it was still running, but they wouldn't let me move it. Our engineer, actually, I ran into one on the far side over there is Tony. He was an engineer on it. Uh, ran into him at the Marty Stewart concert here at the Paramount back a year or so ago. Uh, I did, went over and did a little fundraising from the Clitchfield 100 over in Jonesboro. And uh, back in the time. Now, here's Maddie and Tay um, in 2018. Up and coming stars. And guess who that is? Mr. Marty Stewart. Um, Marty is uh, was a unique individual. He stayed on the back of the train with me most all day. He and the band members, all but one of them, who'd had a death in the family and could not make the trip. Um, actually, Marty is holding the... Uh, this is a Santa train ornament that you'll see over here on the table that was made from the print. Um, this book is on the table. Ken Fitzgerald, his photographer, out of the blue, I'll get a package in the mail. And Ken has sent me that uh, book of all the photographs, or a bunch of them that he took during the train. And these next few slides here should have his name on it, giving him credit. But these are here. Anything from this point that I've shown you on Marty Stewart were from him that he took uh, on, on the back of the train. Showing you the size of the crowds, him getting his print, uh, people that were working on the train, some of the bins of the toys and all. The side of the Clinchfield 100. And some of these others are just uh, what I would consider regular pictures. Uh, Santa Train Tradition. This book is available at the Kingsport Chamber. 
with uh, most of the proceeds of everything going to the scholarship fund. It's also uh, available online with um, word of mouth press uh, printing, which is a Kingsport prayer. They'll get them shipped to you if you happen to be Zooming and don't want to go by the chamber. It's a great read. The original artwork from the inside back cover is over there that they presented to me. Leanne Hoover is a, a believer in supporting the community. Uh, Leanne on the official first book signing out at Metaview back in the day. On the back of the train, we have toys. And I brought two of the satchels that we had this year, just the samples, and they're full of toys for, for age-specific children. These particular toys were made by uh, one of my very closest friends, Jim Stauffer, who passed away several years ago. He used to bring, uh, he would make these each year for us to pass out on the back of the train. Uh, Ross Rowland, his, one of his friends, joined him several years ago and would help him make he would make them at his house and they'd make them together and get together. When Jim died, Ross has continued the, the, the tradition. This year I passed out the last of Jim's toys. Uh, and when his hands started getting bad, he would knit scarves to put on the train because he wanted to keep the dexterity. But great individual, can't say enough about him and thankful to have known him. <clears throat> He's a Bristol boy. He and and uh, Phil Bachman. Uh, we're longtime friends. He was the business manager and he, Jim. Uh, but uh, this is one of the two doll ladies. Over the years, we've had Lois Me back in the early days. We'd take Barbie type dolls and get women together and they would knit clothing for them. This is uh, Jane Lawless from Georgia. Lois Me was from North Carolina early on. Uh, over in this other section over here, it's Jamie Horton I've told you about from my backyard elf that hands me all, every toy I throw off. Generally, she hands me out of the tote so that I can keep throwing. She went down and presented those to her in Georgia. Uh, just people like this from all over the country. This gentleman drives down every year from two churches, and uh, they get together and hand knit, hand crochet, make handmade quilts and we pass those off. So we, I made a deal with him that I'd get a, help, help him get up out on the floor posing if he'd help me get up. So, uh, uh, we look forward every year to see what's going to show up. Corner brand right here in Bristol, over a hundred years old. Uh, she may shoot me for this, but, um, she is, Posing in there when I picked these up, they actually would make out of railroad material, the uh, railroad stripe denim made in America, so we could pass our uh, Greenville made wrapping paper off. Uh, it's a community event. I mean, people all over the country work into it. My chief elf that feeds handles every single tote that goes off the back, either to hand them to uh, all of, we have four people throwing at a time on the back. Right now, it's all plush because we don't want to hurt anybody. Uh, we're people get off the sides of the train all through at every stop. We have trucks that leapfrog uh, every stop and feed the backs of the crowd so everybody has a chance to take the backpacks, you know, the wrapping paper and everything that goes off the sides of the train instead of throwing everything off the back because it's you don't have the feeding frenzy that way. Uh, but Frank handles all that, a longtime friend. Uh, just to give you an idea of the sizes of the crowds, this was a you know, packing party at Food City a year or two ago. Uh, like I said, some of these are vintage. Uh, we got put on sidetrack with COVID for two years, but we still, the team still stayed together. Uh, in 2020, 2020, here's the 2020 couple of pictures. Had drive-bys where people could still come by with their masks on, be handed wrapping paper and, and toys and the backpacks. Uh, 
21, the same thing. Here's some pictures from that year, different things. They are full, full of neat toys and gifts. So we didn't, we kept the, the organization together for those years. This year, around the 1st of August, we were told, well, we can't pull it off again this year. We're going to have to put it on the sidetrack again. Then something important happened. Uh, we got a new CEO at CSX. Now, they were having legitimate service problems, there's no doubt. You know what the labor market's like. They couldn't find staff to run it. They had legitimate concerns. But the team stayed together in Jacksonville and kept pushing. Well, Joe Hendricks, uh, who's on the left, his wife, Maria, the next picture, uh, in their very first meeting, found out that CSX actually had a corporate train. And yes, there was a Santa Claus, and they had a train, but it had been put on the side track. And he said, well, what's it going to take to get it back? He started working with, this is Jamie Boychuk over here on the right and his wife, Lindsay. They got their heads together and got the teams together. And through the efforts of that, they pulled staff. They worked with the unions to make sure that they had the staffing available to pull it off this year. And the Santa train is back on the tracks. And we are assured that it'll be back next year even better. By the end of the train, they were coming up with new ideas on reconfiguration, wanting to know the ideas. We've already had Zoom call meetings since the train, and we'll follow up. I can't say enough about the team effort of CSX transportation not giving up and holding the thing together. There's other key people that, that uh, need to be mentioned. Uh, Notice each one of these boxes are, are marked what the stop's going to be. These are from this current year, by the way. Each one of these. Um, Aaron Walker with, uh, with American Electric Power, Steve Smith, Food City President, Miles Burdine, the Chamber, Buddy Tester, the CEO of Souls, that's S O U S O L E S, as in shoes, letter for souls, S-O-U-L-S, souls for souls, uh, are all key players in there. And I can't say enough about, uh, here they are bringing off the side. I was talking about putting the, the backpacks, the wrapping paper inside. This is what it all goes to. This is President CEO and, and Jamie working, Joe and Jamie chatting a little bit there second fell in and the red cap on the other side over there is is uh, aaron walker the president of american electric power they're financial supporters as well as staff supporters and pulling this thing off uh even with with um and this is my favorite people and the people i want to thank this is from copper creek trestle uh, if you can look down on the very bottom down there, you can see the southern tracks run lower, but we're on the top of the, the track up there, and you can see the Highway 23 run over to the side. Uh, I want to thank especially uh, Renee and Scotty from Birthplace of Country Music, uh, Lee Lindsay. Uh, yes, Lee, I'm going to talk about you tonight. She's the senior VP uh of uh, McNeely P MP and F McNeely Pickett Fox, which is the uh, stra strategic communications company uh, out of Nashville for CSX Corporation, and I've worked with her for years through thick and thin. They have done an unbelievable job putting this together, um, and I would say at this point, uh, I'm the blessed one in here. Nobody cares who Santa's is. It's about the tradition and seeing all those generation after generation after generation of families out there uh, coming back, traveling from all over the country to come see the Santa train. Uh, every time you get an interview or read an interview or see a video, somebody's talking about how far they've traveled just to come back and bring their family back to see it. And I do not leave the back of the train for the entire trip. I'm there from 6 o'clock in the morning at the first stop until three o'clock when it pulls in, they can see a train all year long. 
but they came to see Santa, and I'm blessed to to have that role. So at this point, I'm. I know you may have some questions. I've. Uh, it, it's your serve. <laughs> So thank you so much, Don. That was fascinating and touching and really wonderfully, I mean, a wonderful initiative in our region and very important. And I'm sure that there are some questions in the audience. So if you do have a question, I'll bring over the microphone for you. And Scotty can facilitate any Zoom questions, but does anyone have anything they want to know more about? Do we now know who who might be on the train like a country music Musician for next year? I would say that, that things are in the have been in the works. We did not we they made attempts this year to have a country music or and it, it doesn't have to be country music. I mean it could be uh, who, who knows a NASCAR driver, somebody of of notoriety that's got their heart in it. That that's and that's what they're looking for, somebody that has the heart for traditions and for for the people. I mean, I, I I'm all about education and literacy up through there. I have my own eyes on who I'd like to see, but we'll see if it ever comes to fruition. We do not know at this point, but I can assure you that the the wheels are already at work and and we'll we'll be going forward with somebody. That sounds exciting. <laughs> Anybody else? Don, a couple of things. Uh, first off, if... Um, if the birthplace of country music can in any way assist uh, the effort uh, that you have with regard to any performing artist or somewhat to, to assist on the train, uh, you have the commitment that that'll, that'll happen. All you need to do is let us know and we'll help in any way with what, uh, what you've done and the others at CNA, CSX and Kingsport Chamber and Food City and others. Um, so uh, you've got that. We'll pass okay. that on to to the CSX, to McNeely, Piggott and Fox and their MPNF, Lee and team do the actual soliciting and working on it. Uh, I can tell you the commitments behind it from the CSX team right now. So Excellent. Excellent. We do. We do have one or two connections within the world. Of I, I, I just bet you do. I've, I've run into several of them yeah. and that's why I reworked this whole deal Excellent. tonight to show you what's, what we've been able to share with you. On. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and then on a personal note, uh, just, uh, having, uh, shared, uh, Taylor street with one another initially starting 72 years ago here in Bristol. Um, I'm awfully proud to still be your friend after 72 years and Likewise. what you've done and the commitment you've made to this community in this region. So thank you very much. We're just putting both of us are just putting back in our community and what has been given to us. That's what our mama's taught us. That's exactly right. <laughs> Scotty, do we have any Zoom questions come in? No, I think that was too thorough. The BS monitor just kicked in. (laughs) Well, I did have a follow-up question because you mentioned about the um, sort of the initiative behind the the train was about giving back to those communities that have worked so hard in the coal fields in particular, but also addressing the fact that there's a lot of poverty in that area. Um, Over the years, what kind of impact do you think the train has on those communities? People will tell you from the interviews that you hear, obviously I don't interview people from, from my particular position, but uh, that that may be the only Christmas some of those individuals have. I mean, you see a lot of fine coats and can things like that, but I can tell you last year from a personal standpoint, we delivered because the train didn't run, uh, souls for souls and Macy's sent us a thousand coats that normally would have been to list. And I'm talking about nice coats. And I personally helped deliver all the way up the t- train route into the coal fields as far as Grundy even, uh, those coats to organizations that could place them. This year we had some coats and they went to flood areas. They went to uh, uh, Kentucky into the some of those same areas. So, I mean, we know we're having an impact in helping out from that perspective, but you're also giving them the, the family event. They don't have a parade. Dungannon and St. Paul are the two that that 
really get the communities together behind it and put floats out. And I mean, those are big stops. I mean, there are thousands of people there, but most of the communities you're running down the track, we're running at 25 miles an hour and then we're stopping and distributing. We've got three trucks that leapfrog the train. So everybody gets a chance to get something. And the one thing I did fail to mention, and I missed the pictures on that in my, uh, was special needs party that we go do. We started about six or eight years ago doing a special needs party in Clintwood, Virginia. At Fremont Stop, we used to have special needs kids would gather from, from that county at the track, and it got to be so uh, overburdened that, uh, you know, an autistic child cannot handle crowds. So we came up with the idea of having a special needs party. So Friday before, we drive to Clintwood, have a special needs party, for about a hundred kids. And then we turn around and go back to Kingsport and then eat our dinner and get back on the buses and go North. We used to ride the train North, but now it's, but that's, I know we're making an impact up there. The tradition, the love and those kids are just phenomenal. That's one of my favorite things. And I love the story that you had about one of the Santas recognizing kids year after year and getting them super excited that he knew their name. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I spotted lovely. some track stars over the years that could leap kids as those notebooks hit. They knew what was coming off and they would run and actually jump over kids <laughs> running down the tracks, which wasn't the smartest thing to do, but, uh, but yeah. yeah. Well, anyone else have a final question or two before we, we close for the evening? Well, then I. Dolly's imaginary li library needs to get on board with you. I didn't understand the question. Dolly. Dolly Parton's Imaginary Library. Well, um, let, let me just put it to you this way. I have often stated that when that I will think about retirement when Dolly rides with me. <laughs> I mean, that's that's her alley. Absolutely, 100%. We're on this, when we're parallel, yeah. just like the railroad tracks are, in focus. It's, that would be Those amazing. kids will do anything for a book. And we've had book after book after book that we've sent off up there. I don't know how many hundred of these Santa train books we pass off. I can tell you that uh, Maria Hutchins, the CEO's wife, would make regular trips back to the back of the train for me to hand her more books this year to pass out with, with you know, smiles on her face and tears running down her eyes of, of joy. So, you know, if she calls, I'll, I'll answer. <laughs> and that, that is, was not a plant question, by the way. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's, it's one question. It's probably someone we were all thinking of. So did you have a question? Okay. Um, so yes, let's all, let's all put our good vibes out in the world for that one. <laughs> um, well, please join me and thanking Don, we've had a wonderful time with him this evening, learning about the Santa train and the important and impactful work that it's doing. And um, I, it was something I knew a little bit about, and I'm really glad to know a lot more about it because it's such a worthy cause and such a worthy thing for our um, communities up in Appalachia. So thank you, Don, for being with us tonight. Thank you. <laughs>